everybody, it is Ed, and today I am going to be doing a Shakespeare review, the first Shakespeare review, I think, on my entire channel, because I haven't read that much Shakespeare. It's going to be Othello right here, so uh, this is the most recent Shakespeare book I have read, and it's for class, I will admit, but that didn't stop me from enjoying it quite a bit, and I am going to give my review, because it is, I, I do review every single book that I read, almost, so this is going to be one of those reviews, and right off the bat, this is, Shakespeare is one of my favorites. I, I love the Shakespeare. You can see I have, like, right here, I have my Shakespeare collection. Right here. See, I've got every single Shakespeare book, and I've been reading through this little by little, one at a time, you know? And at this point, I've completed only three Shakespeare plays, including Othello. So, you know, I really want to get onto that, and, you know, we'll, we'll go for it quickly. Othello is one of those classic tales. That's not really that classic. So, you know, Shakespeare's books, you can see their influence through all cultures everywhere in modern day. So, you know, Hamlet is one of the most influential books of Shakespeare. It is really, really everywhere. It is straight up everywhere you look. You can see ha Hamlet, like everywhere. Macbeth, I can see in quite a few places. Romeo and Juliet, of course, incredible. This is one of those that's a classic, but not that it doesn't influence that much. There's quite a bit in here that I see does influence quite a bit, like the green-eyed monster and the crocodile tears. So those two are very famous influences into the world, but the story itself, I think, doesn't really influence. And, and that is a direct reflection of the quality of the story, in my opinion. Starting off with the first scene, you know, first act, I think all of that is just bomb is great i love it and it's just it's a great tension builder it creates incredible character with incredible dialogue dialogue like shakespeare you cannot replicate this dialogue this dialogue is the best of the best like like if you ask me who has the best dialogue of all time my first answer might have been you know tolkien but thinking about it no 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 this is like five times better than tolkien easily this is incredible so he does have his quality of writing still up there everything he describes is beautiful everything he talks about is incredible so the actual technicality of the writing is there my problem with this story is the actual story and the plot of the actual thing. So I will be getting to that. Characters were absolutely beautiful. Iago, my, one of my favorite characters of all time, I think. He's just incredible. And after I watched the movie, it's it's just wonderful seeing this character, you know, grow and change this crafty man beautifully displayed in this book like the book described the character so much better than even the movie could and the movie was visually how how is that even this is just words and it does it better than the movie it's brilliant it's incredible how it does that shakespeare is truly like a genius of all ages man uh but you know he's the best character that is one of the things i i kind of feel weird about because it feels like iago is the main character despite it being Othello, Othello's character, you know? Like, what's going on? But it's okay, I loved, I loved Iago. Othello kind of had almost no character, which was a problem for me because I, I wished, you know, Othello, he was interesting. He was a general, that man, a, just a straight up legend in the world, but he has no character, which is unfortunate. Uh, same thing with Desdemona, not really that much character. Cassie, Cassio, I forget his name. Sure, um, yeah, he has really no character. Iago is the one that has incredible character. You know, Desdemona does have a little bit, same with Amelia. These characters do have tiny little bits of character, and that's great about it. But I think overall, for a story this size, the general consensus should be that there is a certain level of character you might want to hit, and all of these don't hit that. Now, if that was just due to the fact that, you know, the plot was so good that there wasn't enough time to fit all that character in there. Unfortunately, no, I feel like the majority of it is, is dialogue. And don't get me wrong, dialogue is beautiful, greatest thing about this book, but it really feels excessive at times. This is one of those books that really, there's so many soliloquies where they just talk and talk and repeat stuff just in different ways, like I'm doing right now, and they kind of get off on this weird tangent and to me it just feels like the, it just is not the highest quality story. Symbols and yeah, just the symbols are kind of lacking, themes are not lacking, themes were just wonderful, but the symbols themselves were lacking for a Shakespeare novel or Shakespeare play and that kind of upset me as well because I love a good symbol, I love a good, you know, clothing symbol, you know, uh, I forget what else was in Macbeth. Macbeth is the most recent one I've read. So, uh, yeah, I, I love those symbols. Shakespeare has a way with symbols, but in this one, though the, the few that there are are great, 
it's not like there's many at all so it's not that fun for me this entire book is just a game of like chess between Iago and the rest of the world and that's kind of another thing about the title I would say it should be called the tragedy it's the tragedy of Othello but it should be the greatness of like Iago you know Iago's Iago's the man he does it he's great he does so much cool stuff and I I that's the guy who I really wanted to like watch whenever Iago wasn't on on screen I was kind of like okay can we get back to like the good stuff you know what I mean like the good let's get back onto that stuff but that's not the way I should have been feeling because it's the Othello book you know so that, that's kind of weird just moving on from that uh, I do have one big criticism, which I started off at the beginning, and now I'm going to continue, which is, you know, the plot. The plot is kind of bad. Iago's plot, of course, is very simple, and it does what it wants to do. Iago's plot is just great because what you would expect from Iago, it is done to a greater degree. But because of that, or not just because of that, it is the exact opposite for every other character. Othello has a story that you would, you know, think is significantly less important than anything else and I I don't feel like it was important same with the other characters the only characters I really found had a decent story comparatively to their importance in the book would be possibly Desdemona for sure Emilia and those two are like the only two that have a story and Bianca for sure uh, the women definitely have uh, really good roles in this you know you know speaking on term in terms of uh, actual importance and what they have in terms of their plot but the, the male characters really lacked in almost every single way. They kind of just shrugged off everything with the male characters, which is sad because they, they had the capacity to be really good. I feel like I realized this at the very end of the book when there is the final climax, and I won't spoil it even though you've had 500 years to read it till I get on it, Doc. What are you trying to do with me? Like, come on, get on it. But uh, at the end, there is a big tragedy, and the tragedy between Othello and Desdemona I think that was great. But then after that, there was a lot of talking, a lot of stabbing, a lot of stuff going down, and I just thought that that was all boring because none of the characters had great character motivations. Othello just kind of had that one character motivation with Desdemona for the tragedy to happen, and then there was really nothing else. Really, it kind of just disappeared, so I, the, I it's kind of dumb. Uh, the ending really just lacked. The plots just came to an end and you realize that there was really no plot for a lot of these characters. Character arcs come to an end and then you realize there was no character arc. Everything comes to an end and you know, the dialogue disguises it well. Dialogue is in untouchable, it's so beautiful, but there's really no plot by the end of it and there's very few character arcs throughout the entire story. So I am going to go ahead and give this a 3 out of 5 because it's Shakespeare, dog. This is a beautifully written book. Better than almost like anything I've ever read in my life. But for a Shakespeare book, nah. Nah, dog. This is, this is not as good as Shakespeare usually is. You know what I mean? So that is going to be 3 out of 5 stars just for the plot and the character. And um, that's going to be it for my review. If you enjoy Shakespeare reviews, let me know in the comments down below. I will be picking up Shakespeare books if people want, seem to want to see Shakespeare reviews. I would love to do that. And I know this video is not going to get an immense amount of views, but uh, there might be a couple of you that watch this and not the other ones. I'm going to be taking a break from YouTube for a little bit in the future. Uh, also exams, you know, I forgot to mention that in the last video, but stuff is going to happen a while without reviews. Don't think I'm dead. Thanks for that. Uh, yeah, you know, decent Shakespeare uh, reviews over. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment if you had any opinions. Let me know what you thought of the book. Let me know what you thought of the video. I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.